What's going on you guys? This is Bring Your Friends and before I start the uh, video of how to uh, play the class I'm going to show you my spec and give you a little know-how on the abilities of a Jedi Sage. Now a Jedi Sage is basically, uh, long story short, a long range fighter with defensive abilities and a lot of utility. And also we have the cape, or we are also healers as well. So now as far as your class spec it's all based off choice i chose the uh the way of damage which is telekinetics healing you have a healing class as well basically uh direct damage and dot damage which is balance for the most part i chose telekinetics because it seems like it, it takes a little bit more skill to play also the fact that you know i kind of like a challenge because dotting class you, you pretty much just dot and forget it it's a little bit easier to play in my opinion than uh telekinetics and Telekinex, I believe, does more damage. Don't quote me on that. But, especially if you can pull it off, then why not do it? You look like a badass. But I will be explaining to you the uh, the, cla the abilities, just so when I get in there, you're not like, why are you doing this or not this? So, pretty much as far as my spec, I'll even like tell you what I'm going to spec later on as well. Uh, so far, I put three points in the Calming Force because your Disturbance, the most spells you use as a Jedi Sage so far, level 24 for me, Disturbance, Telekinetic Throw, Project, and depending on how many enemies you have, Telekinetic Wave. Now basically, uh, Disturbance you're, you're going to be using quite a bit. The range is great. I believe 35 meters is the highest you got as far as anything other than Telekinetic Wave. It's a single direct attack and it deals a decent amount of damage. So you're going to be using that on your... Uh, routine with project and telekinetic throw. Telekinetic throw is also good because it slows the target so basically what I'll do is uh, for the most part as far as my starter I'll always cast project just because it automatically stuns them sometimes depending on their level for three seconds so once I hit project I'll cast disturbance because once they're stunned you have of course a lot of time to do whatever so why cast telekinetic throw when you can cast disturbance first and then telekinetic throw third because you start off with the stun, which gives you ability to cast, and then you also do damage while slowing them, which gives you the ability to kite. Now also we have, Jedi Sages have a lot of slowing abilities in the game as well. We have Force Stun, which stuns them for 4 seconds. We have Force Wake, which knocks them down for 3 seconds, but you can also spec into the ability to stun them all together, which is Force Wake, which is like midway up the Telekinetics 3 tree. If you spec two points into it, it gives you a 100% chance to immobilize them for two seconds. But, of course, damage will break it prematurely. Of course, that makes sense. Logic. So, we have Project. As far as our stuns, we have Project, Force Stun, and Force Wave. As far as slows, we have Telekinetic Throw and Force Slow. I believe that's it as far as so far. So pretty much if you rotate those in a good combination, you can essentially kite somebody. Not to mention the fact that we have force armor, uh, force slow as well. So I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to keep the enemy at bay. Especially since you're a support class. You're not really made to be up in an enemy's face fucking just casting spells. They're obviously going to interrupt you. The knockback is going to be so great that you won't even be able to do damage anyways. So yeah. And pretty much uh, if you're... If you play WoW at all, you know that you have a trinket. Pretty much Force of Will is pretty much a standard trinket. I'm not sure if it's on every other classes, but on my class, of course, you have Force of Will. And it just breaks you out of any uh, CC or movement pairing effects. So you have that as well. And also, further up the tree, uh, what I will be specking into is Telekinetic Collapse. Basically, my Force Armor has 100% chance, 2 points, uh, to stun all enemies for three seconds after they break my shield, which is also good when you're trying to kite. I will probably be getting Telekinetic Infusion because Force Attacks have a 100% chance grant yada yada, lowering Force Cost your next two Force Abilities by 100% and also reduce the cooldown of your Force Speed by five seconds. So it gives me the ability to kite. I'm obviously going to use it. And then of course, you're, if you're not retarded, you're going to spec into Tidal Force, Telekinetic Momentum, and Tremors. Pretty much uh, dumbing it down, your Disturbance has a 30% chance, and your Force Quake to Grand Tidal Force immediately finish the cooldown of Telekinetic Wave. So, pretty much, your Disturbance and your Force Quake 
give you a shorter cooldown of telekinetic wave, which is obviously good for AoE attacks or just your your strongest fucking like Kamehameha Dragon Ball Z mode. You just fucking unload on them. So why not? I'm not honestly sure what a clarity is. I haven't read up on it, but you have to get it to get uh, turbulence. Turbulence is pretty much almost like an automatic cast of telekinetic wave, except on a single target. So you might as well just say it's an upgraded uh, spell of disturbance and Turbulence automatically hits targets affected by your weakened mind. So obviously you're going to cast weakened mind, which is an instant before uh, casting turbulence for maximum effect. So yeah, I mean you have a lot of CC. Also, oh, also you have force lift. Basically, force lift is equivalent to a mage's sheep in uh, World of Warcraft. You force lift them; they kind of stay there for six seconds. You know, just chill out, whatever. Just don't touch them. Purely for CC. It actually gives them health back as well. It almost seems like they just stole it from WoW, put a new uh, little picture, and took the mechanics. But whatever. As long as it works and it plays well, then fuck it. I don't care less what they fucking jack from WoW. It doesn't matter. And last thing that I haven't really explained was Force Potency. Uh, grants two charges of Force Potency, which increases the critical chance of your direct attacks and heals by 60%, and increases the range of telekinetic throw. So pretty much... Before you use Telekinetic Throw, cast Force Potency to get a little bit a little bit more range. And if you're healing somebody, you cast Force Potency as well. It gives you a little boost. But as far as direct attacks, Jedi Sages don't really benefit that much from direct attacks, so you'd be using it for two out of the three. So now that you briefly know the rotation, uh, what I can do, and pretty much everything in that general area, let's move on to some PvP. Alright, so along with the, uh, as far as the game type goes, basically, it's kind of like plant the bomb. You you put a bomb on one of the two doors, one's on the right, one's on the left. The bomb explodes, you go to the next point, which I believe is a bridge. You extend the bridge, go on to the next point, which is lower shield, go to the next point, plant a couple bombs again, and then you're pretty much finished. Now, as far as the placement of a Jedi Sage, you're going to want to stay back and kind of out of harm's way as much as possible because you're not a Jedi Sentinel, you're not a tank. You know, you're a ranged melee, you're a ranged healer, and you don't right, can't really afford to like put yourself in harm's way unless it's to like defend an objective as I'm doing here. So other than that, you pretty much get the fuck out of dodge and just do ranged DPS and kite and heal when needed. So of course, uh, me and a couple other guys defending the objective, we're pushing our way forward onto the next point, and so on and so forth. Now there's a guy in front of me right here, pretty much just trying to slow him down so everyone else can make their way in the room, position it, and open the, the gate or whatnot. Find a way over the reactor core pit, then place the explosives on one of So it doesn't seem like anyone's doing it, so I'll, I will do it. I will be the team player. But at least they're providing pretty good CC, so that's obviously a good start. So I'm fucking hauling ass over here, and I see a guy right here, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna force lift him. But he reacts pretty quickly with a, uh, a force AoE. Doesn't knock me off the bridge, that was pretty much his intention. That way, when you're always on the bridge, stay in the very middle. That way, if pricks try to force push you off, you're obviously not gonna fall off because you're pretty centered. So as far as right here, just trying to do as much DPS as possible, but no one is planting on the door, so I will be the one to do the thing again. You gotta be a team player, because you're not in it for the, you're not doing this for the damage. Damage gets you nowhere. If you don't win, you don't really get as much experience. So yeah, why not? So just trying to stay back as much as possible. You can cast a telekinetic wave, because if they OE, there's a couple people in the same vicinity. Uh, so you might as well get stack up the damage. And pretty much just disturbance, telekinetic throw, and project. And it seems like there's cluttered up too much on this side. Probably momentarily. I, I believe I go to the other side and try and plant the bomb. Just because the spawn is in the middle where that purple crap is to my left. And as I said, I was right. I'm just going to cast a little bit of damage before I go and plant the bomb. They haven't really noticed me yet, so that's good. So while those two finish them off, hopefully uh, nobody uh, sneak attacks me from behind. If they don't, I got the door. So we just move on to the next point, which they don't. So that's good. So right now, you're pretty much just stalling. If anyone gets in the door, you cast your AoE, automatically knocks them back, or any damage uh, prevents them from uh, 
defusing the bomb, so that's good. So too many people on the door. I'm going to cast AoE, get them off. And from here, just casting as much damage and interrupting them as much as possible. Once the door hits, hit four sprint, uh, set up your position. Also, another thing that's very important is a Jedi Sage. You keep your uh, your shield up as much as possible because I believe it prevents you from getting interrupted by damage when you're healing. So if you're low and you have the tamp choice to choose between healing and your shield, shield first, heal second. It's just common sense. Gives you the time to heal and you just rinse and repeat if necessary while also kiting. Now I got the door here completely uncontested. And I saw two guys to my left, so I figure I'm just going to make a mad dash towards the, this door right here and try and plant the bomb and call it a game. Because once you get into here, it's really hard to stop stop you from going and touching a computer. You don't even have to like do a cast timer or anything. You just touch it and you win the game. But obviously those two guys that I saw to my left give me a time or whatever. And it looks like I'm going to die because there's no one here. But it honestly doesn't matter because you've actually distracted them for a, a large amount of time, giving your team a chance to advance in and do what they have to do. Hopefully taking advantage of your precious sacrifice. It kind of seems like I'm trying I'm looking at both sides seeing which one which side has the least people and where it has the least people I'm obviously going to go. And it looks like this this side has two people. Kind of had one guy kind of midway to my left that was just kind of right now I'm playing the bomb. And Great CC by Apothic. He did a force stun followed by a force lift, which allowed me to plant the bomb entirely. So we pretty much won the game almost because of his uh, his ability to control people at the right time, which is great. And I actually gave him props for it. Because I believe the dude's a Jedi Sage just like me, so obviously he must be badass. So from here, it's just pretty much slowing those guys down. And that's pretty much it. Like, the game is pretty simple, but uh, you have to pretty much play as a team to uh, get everything uh, together and rolling. As far as the damage go, I wasn't uh, top in damage or healing, but that's not the point as far as this type of objective game. It is with others, but not with this. It's pretty much uh, supporting your team, getting the, uh, getting the gates open and winning the game. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully it made sense to you. And if not, I'm sorry. I tried my best. But this is Bring Your Friends. Remember to rate, subscribe, share with your friends if you want to know how to play a Jedi Sage. And I'm out of here. Peace.